Eversolo's DMP-A6 was, I think, 2023's hottest hi-fi product because it put a streaming DAC with a touchscreen and VU meters and high-res Apple Music streaming in the hi-fi rack for roughly 800 euros. So in this video, we're going to look at Eversolo's DMP-A8, which sells for over twice the A6's asking price. And we're going to assess the A8 with three side-by-side -side comparisons using music that you would read about over on Pitchfork, The Quietus, or Resident Advisor. This episode is brought to you by T plus A, makers of the Solitaire P headphones. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, the DMP A8 is a higher end streaming DAC and a pre-amplifier and it's from Eversolo in China. And yes, it is made in China. Now the A8 can do everything that the A6 can do, but this costlier model comes with quite a few extras and I will pick my three favorite A8 features later in this video. But that also means that I'm not gonna go over old ground in this video, so you'll need to watch my A6 video as a primer for this one. So as you can see, the A8 is a wider unit than the A6, not quite full width, but definitely wider. And the A8's chassis material is less prone to those kind of white finger smudges than the A6. I don't know what material manufacturers use on their chassis that kind of when you rub your finger on it, you just get this kind of white streak that's very hard to remove. A little bit frustrating. That does exist on the A6, but not on the A8 as far as I can tell. But I also don't think it's unreasonable to ask why the A8 didn't get a screen upgrade over the A6, because as far as I can tell, it's the same model. Having said that, if the A8's screen was any wider, it would be even less conducive to streaming app display than the A6 because it's a landscape screen. And like the A6, the landscape touchscreen here gives us access to a range of whitelisted apps, chief among them Apple Music. And yes, and I'll reiterate this to the point of annoyance of some viewers, I'm really sorry, but yes, Apple Music does, does 100% include high res support on the Eversolo DMP A8 and the A6, obviously. And it functions pretty much as it does on a smartphone. But I still think that the landscape orientation of that screen makes it feel a little bit fiddlier than a smartphone to use. I'm talking about the Apple Music app here. However, the A8 also adds an HDMI arc input that comes with a choice of two operational modes. In the menu setting, we can choose ARC or eARC. I'm not gonna go into the differences between the two here, but I will put a link in the description box below in case you're curious. And that HDMI ARC socket, which doesn't exist on the A6, allows us to route Apple Music running on an Apple TV via a TV into the A8. But BitPerfect enthusiasts should be advised that the Apple TV itself no longer resamples CD quality audio to 48 kilohertz and keeps it at 44.1, but it still cannot do high res. So if high res is important to you, you wanna use the Apple Music app on the A8 itself, me, I, I'm not really that fussed about high-res audio, so I'm happy to stream, well, from the app, but also from my Apple TV, through my TV, so I can sit and have basically the display on my telly, and I can sit here and just kind of lean back, really. Whereas when you're kind of up in the grill of the A8, you've got to go over to your hi-fi rack and start tippy-tappy typing. Oh, and a side note here, 
the Apple Music Classical app is also now available to all Eversolo users. And joining those Apple Music apps are apps for Tidal and Spotify, even though the A8 already does Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect. But Eversolo have told me that their version of Tidal has a different layout to the native app, especially when you're using Eversolo's own smartphone app. Less common is SoundCloud, which I use quite often. Plus there's also Deezer and Amazon Music, which I don't use at all. Many commenters ask me like, what about Deezer? What about Amazon Music when I talk about Tidal and Apple Music? And the fact of the matter is, as I explained in those videos, I don't use those streaming services because I already use four or five other streaming services and taking on two more is just too much, I'm sorry. So if you want Amazon Music commentary or Deezer commentary, you'll have to find somebody else who will talk about that. Anyway, getting back on track, you're probably gonna need some of those dedicated apps on the A8 itself because the A8 doesn't do Google Chromecast. And know too that the A8's Room Ready certification is still pending at time of taping. So I had to lean on its Apple AirPlay input to get my Rune fix. However, I did notice some strange behavior from the A8 in that once you play an AirPlay stream, all other streams are displayed on the front panel as AAC, even though they're not. I don't know what's going on there. I have reported this to Eversolo and we'll see if they issue a firmware update with a bug fix down the line. Yes, that's right. Rune will stream to devices certified by the company and they call this Rune Ready and obviously the A8 is not Rune Ready yet. And Rune is the main sponsor of this video. You don't necessarily need a Rune Ready device for Rune to send music over your home network to your hi-fi system because Rune can stream to device supporting Apple AirPlay. So like an Apple TV, or if you've got a really old Airport Express, any device that does AirPlay, Rune can stream to it. And Rune can also stream to devices that support Google Chromecast. And it can even stream to Sonos devices out of the box. And I think that's pretty neat. So thank you to Rune for sponsoring this video. The A8 DAC circuit is built around AKM DAC chips instead of the ESS used in the A6. And it inherits the femto clocking of the A6 Master Edition, which what about us, please note this, I do not have. Do not what about me about the A6 Master Edition because I don't know because I don't have one. But I think femto clocks, the ones found in the A6 Master Edition and now in the A8, are what I call audiophile catnip it sends audio files into a bit of a spin. However, a DAC sound, as I've said many times before, is as much a result of its analog output stage and its power supply as it is the DAC chip. And in the A8, we get an overhauled power supply compared to the A6, where a switching mode device feeds the, the streaming circuit and the screen, but the audio circuit is juiced by a linear power supply. And for me, that's another sprinkling of audiophile catnip. And whilst we're talking about audiophile catnip, the preamplifier circuit in the A8 uses a resistor ladder volume control that clicks nicely as we turn the volume up and down. And that's as true as getting hands-on with the unit as using any smartphone app to change the volume and also the remote control. So we can change the volume with our hands with the Eversolo app, with a third party app, or with the supplied infrared remote control, which is also a Bluetooth remote. And that remote, it's super basic, it's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. But our audiophile catnip radar really lights up when noting the I2S output on the back of the A8. So that's for connecting the A8 to an external DAC if you don't wanna use the spit of outputs on the back as well because audiophiles, they love I2S, they go crazy for it. 
Now, what's cool about this I2S implementation is that inside the A8's menu system, we can configure the pinout. And we have to do that because there are no industry standards for I2S. In this particular case, the terminations are an HDMI plug, but that's not HDMI arc or anything like that. That's a separate thing. Now, personally speaking, I wish that I2S socket was an input, not an output, ready for hooking in the Shanling ET3 as a CD transport. But that's me giving my selfish wish list there. After all, the A8 already has a very good DAC inside. So let's talk about that a bit more. So now that you've watched my A6 video, you know that I liked, but I didn't necessarily love its sound quality. The way I hear it, and I hear it still, the A6 is nicely resolving, in fact it's very detailed, but it's a bit too bright and a bit too skeletal for my personal taste. So I know a lot of people like that kind of very resolving and slightly thin sound, it's not for me. But putting the A8 side by side for a comparison with the A6, we know that the A8 is, yeah, it's a pretty different sounding DAC in that it sounds ever so slightly richer, a bit smoother, and altogether less nervy and agitated than the A6. So playing Kings of Convenience is the build-up, the A8 offers a more refined top end than the A6, but I will say that its body still leans towards that sort of ectomorphic vibe, even though it doesn't go as far as the A6 does. And a reminder here that these differences aren't of the same magnitude as we hear between rooms or between loudspeakers. Talking of which, I conducted all side-by-side -side comparisons in this video with each streaming DAC used as a pre-amplifier feeding a MyTech Brooklyn Amp Plus, and that MyTech Amp took turns driving the Zoo DWX and the KEF R3 Meta. So now let's contextualize the A8 sound quality with a side-by-side -side comparison with another product that sells for less than the A8, and that is the recently reviewed Cambridge Audio CXN100. I mean, why buy an Eversolo DMP A8 when you can get the CXN100 for half the money? So as you might have guessed, the A8 isn't as meaty sounding as the CXN100, but it is glossier with tonal colors and offers cleaner layer separation. And I think it also puts more sparkle into the top end of Tom Waits's Hang On St. Christopher. And the sub bass kicks a little bit harder on deadbeats, put on your red shoes and trance, which is just a great techno cut that has nothing to do with David Bowie whatsoever. What about the more expensive MyTech Brooklyn Bridge 2 that I also have here? So that brings us to our third side-by-side -side comparison for this video. Now the A8 doesn't sound quite as meaty in the mids with Glass Beams' Mirage as the MyTech does. And it also sounds a bit flatter in the depth plane and less, yeah, less present than the MyTech. So in my book, the Eversolo, it's not a giant killer, but that's no failure when we know that the Eversolo sells for under half of the MyTech's asking price. Okay, so now it's time for me to list my three favorite features found on the A8. Now, firstly, the parametric EQ gives us the option to tweak the frequency response of the A8 according to taste. And it can also help us deal with an overly bright or overly dull speaker system or mitigate some of our room's bass problems. That's very powerful, actually, being able to have the parametric EQ inside the unit so you can pull down some of the bass peaks. You can't fill a trough, a hole in the frequency response, but you can pull down some peaks in your room using that parametric EQ. And especially useful is the Q setting that allows us to determine the width 
of each adjustment. But audiophiles who live for the high-res audio catnip need to know that this parametric EQ resamples all audio to 48 kilohertz. So no high-res for you when you engage that parametric EQ and the DSP that powers it. Otherwise, if you turn it off, high-res flows freely. My second favorite feature of the DMP-A8 is its analog input, which sees the EverSolo work as an analog preamplifier, so that the incoming signal is kept in the analog domain from the XLR or RCA inputs all the way to the XLR or RCA outputs. No digitization, no DSP, and therefore, obviously, no parametric EQ. Why does this matter? Well, it allows us to add our turntable to the mix, and it also keeps vinyl purists happy when doing so. So what's my favorite feature of the DMP-A8? This might be a surprise to many of you, but I think I'm gonna talk about this quite a bit this year, and that is Plexamp. Now, I had initially hoped to use EverSolo's beta app for Plex as a Rune replacement for this device, but I couldn't get it to list my music library's contents, so that was really a no-go. And I did consider using the new Squeeze Connect feature that turns effectively the A8 into a squeeze box, but one of my patrons told me that Plexamp can be sideloaded onto the A8 without issue. And he was right. I installed Plexamp using an APK file that you download from the net on a USB drive. And I plugged that into the back of the A8 and he said, oh, do you want to install this APK? And I'm like, yes, please. And it installed it. And then I just pressed it and it started up. And the resulting app works and it works well. So the visual formatting of the app collapses elegantly to fit EverSolo's landscape touchscreen. Now, Plexamp behaves similarly to Rune in that every instance of it is a controller and an endpoint. And it also integrates Tidal, and it can be used as a streaming client and a downloader out in the street, just like RuneArc. We've made a video about that before. I'm not gonna go into that here. But back on the A8, we navigate our Plex server's music library using the touchscreen. And then we hit play when we find something we wanna to listen to. But I did find that Plexamp's UI on the A8 is a bit sluggish, it's a bit laggy. So instead, what we can do is we can use Plexamp on a smartphone, running on the same network, obviously, and have it hand off the stream to EverSolo's instance of Plexamp. So as long as Plexamp is running on the A8, it behaves as a Plexamp endpoint. And I see no reason why this won't also work on the A6 now. So I'd like to see EverSolo develop Plexamp as a bona fide whitelisted app. So yeah, the A8 has some very interesting sort of experimental or progressive features, but it also goes long on audiophile catnip. And yes, I've made several references to audiophile catnip in this video because audiophiles like me, we're weird, right? I mean, I don't get off on I squared S or DSD or resistor ladder volume controls as much as other audiophiles, but I do enjoy the simplicity, the minimalism, and the all-in-one nature of products like the EverSolo DMP-A8. And if you don't understand that, then I hope at least you understand that audiophile catnip is just a joke. It's just my sense of humor. And if it's your sense of humor too, please give us a like down below and consider subscribing to this channel. And hit me up on Patreon for pre-made playlists for all the music seen and heard in this video. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Yeah, I'm kind of taking my filming life in my hands today because the weather is extremely variable. The sun comes out, it goes in again, it comes out again, so we'll see what happens. And like the A6, the landscape, I'm not gonna go in the diff, in. bit perfect enthusiasts should be advised, which are far easier to, many commenters always wanna know, like what about Deezer, what about Amon, Many commenters always ask me, like, the A8 DAC circuit is built around an AKM DAC, but that's me giving my selfish wish. But, but sit,
But sitting the A8 side by side for a comparison with the A6, we know that the A8 it so playing the kings of convenience. So now let's contextual. So now let's contextualize. I could never say this. So as you might have guessed, the A8 isn't as me. So as you might have guessed, the A8. And I think it also puts more sparkle in the end of Tom Waits. No. Sorry, Olaf, if you've seen this bit, seeing me sniffing like a lunatic. What about the more expensive MyTech Brooklyn Bridge 2 that I also have here? That brings us to our third bar. And especially useful in targeting the width of, let's say, those room notes. But audiophiles who live for the high res catnip need to know to fit Ever Solo's landscape. And then we hit play on an album when we find something we want. We'll... And then we hit play. And then, yeah, I think that went okay. The sun didn't come out. I don't think the sun came out. Hopefully the light behind me didn't change too much.